Hi guys and welcome back to the channel El Dominant. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to see more. Coming up in today's episode we look at the prospects and my prediction for Wigan Warriors in 2022. So we start today with the Wigan Warriors and introduction to who they are. Well one, they're the team that I follow and two, they are the most successful rugby league team since rugby league was invented with over 100 titles to their name whether that's the 22 league leaders championships or grand finals in that total 19 challenge cups four world club challenges so on and so forth that's not a small feat in any aspect so we're going to go over a few bits and pieces about them, who they are during the Super League era, and the key players involved. Wigan Warriors currently play at the stadium called the DW Stadium, which is in a Wigan suburb called Robin Park, and it has a capacity of over 25,000. During their lifespan, uh, Wigan Warriors have played at two other places. One, specifically Central Park, which is the um, is the home of Wigan Warriors and will be synonymous with them for the rest of time, as it's seen the most success of all Wigan teams, and had played there since 1902. But before that, they played at Folly Field on Upper Dickerson Street in Wigan. Since the formation of the Rugby Football League, Wigan's first title as winners of the top division came in 1908 in the 1909 season. And after this, their 22 wins were sparsely placed until the late 80s, early 90s, where they went on a seven season run before the formation of Super League, where they won the league from 89 to 96. They also won the Challenge Cup 84 85, 87 to 1995 during this period and had different coaches during the period where they stayed maybe one or two years as their head coach. It was 1998 and returning head coach John Mooney was the one that led Wigan Warriors to their first ever grand final victory in 1998 which was the first of five Super Leagues. But there was a bit of a gap between this victory in 1998 to the one that comes for next and didn't win a trophy until the appointment of Michael Maguire and was almost relegated during this period until 2010 where Wigan won three pieces of sweat, uh, silverware the Carnegie Nines, the League Leader Shield and the Super League Grand Final this was the club's first Grand Final win for 12 years by beating St. Helens 22 points to 10 Maguire followed the season up by winning the Challenge Cup in 2011 but left the club to be replaced by Sean Wayne who has the most successful Wigan coach during the Super League era with three championships, one World Club Challenge, one League Leader Shield and a Challenge Cup to his name. He left in 2018 which led to the appointment of Adrian Lamb, who was initially on a one-year deal with Sean Edwards coming in, the club legend, the following season. But Sean Edwards had a change of mind and Lamb coached the Warriors for three years. And But after the 2021 season, he had only one League League Shield to his name in the trophy cabinet. And he left Wigan with 25 games played, 15 wins and 10 losses and also the lowest points for total 
for quite some years as they were the second worst in try point scoring during this, this regular season of the Super League in 2021. So with 2022 starting, Wigan Warriors brought back Sean Wayne in a leadership and managing director role. And with Sean O'Loughlin and Lee Breers, either side of Matt Pete, who comes in as the head coach after years in the back room with Wigan Warriors. His old role of head of analysis, which he was before he was assistant manager of Pete, Jack Phillips has taken over the head of analysis role. We have talisman Jackson Hastings Wright and Oliver Gildart, fan favourite and academy product, going to, both going to West Tigers in the NRL for the 2022 season. There was some rebuilding to be done in key areas. They weren't the only ones to go, with Don Manfredi having to retire late last season. The try scoring machine was going to be a sore miss. And also two big forwards. Like Joe Bullock, who was developing quite nicely, has moved on to Warrington. And Tony Club has retired from the game completely. And he is a Sean Wayne man, a big tough forward. Incoming came a former favourite Ian Thornley to boost up the outside backs. Kay Custer, who was will go into the halfback role, and also forward Cade Ellis who comes in to bolster up that forward line. With Patrick Mayago coming in from the Rabbitohs and London Broncos duo uh, Ramon Silva right and uh, Abbas Miski on the left. Wigan have started to form a new squad under Pete Stewart Stiff. Chip. This is to go with the other players that Wigan have, such as Jay Jai Fields, who has returned from injury and is looking to play himself back into the squad, and Bevan French, who unfortunately is a little bit disjointed pre-season as well, as he's stayed in Australia due to the passing of um, his mother. We send his condol uh, condolences to him and his family. Plus, with the mainstays of John Bateman, who's returned from the NRL in different seasons, to be honest, in 2021. Liam Farrell is a consistent performer no matter what. And Tommy Lulai, they'll be looking to do a lot better on the goal forward front compared to last season's efforts. Then there are youngsters like Harry Smith and Sam Halsall, who are coming through the ranks over the last couple of seasons, I'll be looking to step up that one pace further to get involved in the squad as full-time members. But we can wax lyrical about the Wigan Academy so much with the amount of quality that comes through their ranks. So where do I think that Wigan Warriors will finish in 2022? I'm going to be honest. I feel that they're in a transition period, and while they'll have their usual forceful defensive line, Misley defence, it will be up to the other teams to stop them scoring so that they can beat Wigan Warriors. I think there will be need some work on the try scoring, as I don't think the goal forward at Wigan Warriors is as good as what it has been previously but I think it's a step up from the season before so while I say that the fifth place from last year was a bad effort I think there will be a little bit of progression I think they'll finish fourth Matt Peets will have the experience behind him and also have thoughts on how to better his assistant role as the head coach from last season. Now, it's all going to be subjective and don't think Wigan will rely too much on two or three players because I think they were looking at star men to do something 
spectacular to score tries in goal forward and be expansive, be more offensive, and that backfired. I think the way that Rugby League plays and the way that Wigan Warriors have played in the past is where they'll go in 2022. So, what I mean by that? Misley defence, structured go forward with everyone as part of a team structure. It will be built up and built up as the games go on and they will just grind everything out. I'm sorry if that's not expensive expansive go forward rugby that everyone's looking forward to with spectacular tries and things like that but I don't think I, it's going to be a sorry factor for much long they're winning games winning trophies they've got to find a way that's the Wigan way and with Sean Wayne there in the background giving advice to Matt Pete. Matt Peak can be a massive success. I don't think he'll win it this year. I think he's a couple of years too early into his career to be a fully fledged top notch coach, as we've not seen anything back from him. Then we're Wigan. I wish him good luck and hopefully he's a success. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and also share this video worldwide so we can get a word out there for our rugby league fans and to grow our fantastic game. And so that's my prediction for the 2022 season for Wigan Warriors. Do you agree with my assessment? And if not, tell me where you think they would finish. I think they've got enough to be in the playoffs and be high up in the playoffs, but I don't think they'll reach a grand final. They might be involved in a Challenge Cup, but that might not come to a pass because I think other teams might be a bit too strong. Now, I'd like to have that feedback. You tell me where I've gone wrong, where I've gone right. If you agree, then great. If not, I'm happy to listen to your opinions. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Share, share, share this video worldwide. Please, stay safe. I'll say all the best to you. Bye for now.